Hey, so today's video is on Farcaster Frames. For those that don't know, Farcaster is a decentralized social media platform. So think something like Twitter, but the data is fully open, basically. There's an open database. Now, why is this interesting? Right now, if you want to get data from Twitter, Twitter owns the API. You have to pay them hundreds of dollars a month or thousands of dollars a month. You can't extend it. You can't build your own client. It's fully held by Twitter itself. The only other client that really exists today, I think, is pro.twitter.com, for example. So the main client is warpcast.com, but lots of other people create clients too. For example, here is a client called launchcaster.xyz. You can see warpcast looks very much like Twitter. But if I go to LaunchCaster, you can see it's more of a product hunt type experience and it's for people launching on the platform. And you could imagine a version which looks like Instagram or a version that sort of has its own functionality. Anyone can create their own client. It takes something like Twitter, which is a form of communication um, and similar to email. There are a thousand email clients out there now around this sort of Twitter and social media concept. You have that with Farcaster as well. It's an idea I've been really excited about already a year and a half. I've been quite active on the Forecaster platform as of two weeks ago. I think it started to go viral. It's now grossed up 100,000 users in the last month or so. But I've been like following this story for a while because it's the sort of thing that interests me quite a lot. And the reason I've been excited about it even before the hype started is because of what it enables. Right now, if we want to see improvements made to Twitter, it's fully based on the Twitter team. If you look at the last 17 years of Twitter history, it hasn't really progressed much. More recently with Elon, it's starting to move a bit faster. But for the most part, it's the same platform. No one could improve it. No one could really adjust it. If you created your own client, you got shut down at a certain point. A platform like Forecaster, the database is open. So it's similar to open source. Warpcast itself isn't open source. There might be other clients which are open source, but the data behind it, like the database of what's showing all these different tweets and costs, that's all open. So imagine the possibilities of what you can build here. And for me, it's similar to the Wikipedia versus Encarta moment. Encarta was fully owned by Microsoft. There was only so much they could do as like an individual team. But Wikipedia, anyone can contribute and Wikipedia blew Encarta out the water. There was no way Encarta could compete with millions of people providing content for Wikipedia. Any expert could join and put their own data in. It's not one-to-one -one with social media platforms. What Twitter has in its favor, it's got a gigantic moat and user base. And to get hundreds of millions of people onto Farcaster, I don't see that happening anytime soon. But the concept as a whole, which is like better for society, an open database where people can build their own clients and own experiences or a closed silo owned by a single company, I would say the former is the better platform. Well, that doesn't mean it's going to win in the long run or that it will ever be able to take over Twitter. Network effects are extremely powerful, but at the very least, that's what interests me. And so me as a developer, I can go and create the experience I want. Now, after that long intro, there's something new that Farcaster has added that makes its extensibility and building into the platform even easier. And it's something called frames. Frames are similar to OG images. For example, if you add this metadata to your page, an image, a description, it will show up in Google or in Facebook when sharing it. OG image, specifically open graph image, here you can see the image that displays and it displays in lots of different platforms. So we can add images, that's cool. You can add titles, descriptions, different ways you want the card to appear. But what if you want to go a bit further than that? What if you want to add a button into your preview that says sign up? What if you want to add some more functionality? So that's what frames are. It's like mini iframes and they feel deceptively simple at first, but there's a lot of power that comes with them. So let's take a look at an example of a frame here. This tweet or this cast has a frame in it and you can see it has these buttons. And so if I want to click subscribe, I can just immediately subscribe over here. I don't have to leave the platform and I can just enter my info here. And th this input is actually an advanced frame. Most frames are just going to be an image with a few buttons, but even with that, you can do quite a lot. Let's take a look at another example here. Somebody actually built a full game into a frame, just clicking these buttons. It takes a little bit of time to load every time there's a new image loaded. But here you can see in the image, it's got a farm guide here, a mint more button. This is an external link and so on. Now here somebody even went and created a game of chess in a frame. Now this is quite difficult. Let's go D2 to D4. Okay. So I'm playing the computer here and it actually works. So these are just proof of concept. Right now it's not actually ripe for gaming, but it's a very cool concept that what people are able to create. I'm going to show you how they work behind the scenes. They're very simple, very similar to what we saw on open graph. 
instead of OG URL, you have OG button or OG input and things like that. And you'll have a post URL for when a button is clicked. And I also put out a frame today. I might show you a bit of the code behind it, but here you can join an affiliate program directly from within Farcaster without having to leave the platform. And this is possible because you are signed into Warpcast here. And when you click this button, join affiliate program, I'll be able to get your ID from Warpcast. I know you just clicked it and now you've joined the affiliate program. You've got your own unique referral code, which I can provide to you over here, your stats and so on. Beyond that, Frames also now support minting or in other words, purchasing an item online. So this opens up a whole new world of possibilities. Imagine just being able to come here. I can see a can of Coke. I can click mint. This even is going to cost me some amount of money. This is obviously a digital can of Coke, so I can't really do much with it, but potentially they could also just ship me this can of Coke. And I think all of this will become possible within the next half a year or so. The Farcaster team is moving pretty quickly on this. We're seeing new functionality come out day by day. It's all very possible. And what's cool about it is this functionality is so simple. It's built into all the different Farcaster clients. It's not just warpcast.com here. It's everyone. So I can share this link and it will appear, appear in different formats on lots of different platforms, basically the same way as OG images appear on Google, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and so on. If you want to see some more frames, which are interesting, go to topframes.xyz. Here you can see a girl, Scout Cookies, an e-commerce store, and there's a whole bunch of other things. Forecast here is a crypto community, so a lot of Web3 people are there, but it's not specific to Web3. Anyone can join. How is a frame actually built? Let's dive into the specification of what it looks like. You just need to add a few tags. One of them, similar to OG image, you're going to add a frame image. And then you can also add buttons. You can add a post URL, which means when a button is clicked, it's going to send a post request to this URL. You can also have different actions. For example, it could be a redirect. It could be a mint, a link. A link is just clicking a button. It takes you to an external website. You can have input text, which we saw before. So I could add my email to subscribe to something. And that's more or less what frames is. So you just add like a few HTML meta tags to your page. And now you have a frame. When a post request is made, you'll get data like this. This is the data you'll get. FID is basically the user's forecast ID. You'll get a bunch of other information, the timestamp, the button that was clicked. If there was input over here, you can see it's hello world. And also the tweet or the cost that it's referring to, who cost it, the hash of the cost and so on. Oh, the most basic use case is actually polls, by the way. Forecaster didn't build polls themselves. They launched the ability to have polls, but as frames. So Twitter, the team went and built polls, but Forecaster, you just have an image with four buttons and depending on which button you choose, the frame updates and that that's the poll. So I'll show you some of my own code just to make this even more clear. If you're familiar with Next.js, generate metadata is a way to add metadata to a page. And you can see I have the standard stuff like title, description, open graph and Twitter. But then I've also added some of my own tags and it's very simple. The frame we saw before for ShareMint is just these five lines of code to add the data to the frame. And then what's important is the post URL. And so when the button is clicked, it causes post URL. And you can see this is a route it's calling. And again, here, it's pretty simple. I get the address of the user. I make some API calls that our platform supports and I return a new frame. And this new frame can have a new image and new buttons. So if we take a look at that in graphical format, here you can see this is the initial screen. It has two buttons on it. When I click the button foo, it sends a post request and now this sends me back to a new frame. Okay, that wasn't right. Play again, new button. And if I click bar, it takes me to this screen and here you can see an external link and that's how frames work. And you could have an infinite number of frames connected. So there we've covered the basics about frames. I'll just show you a few other tools which are helpful. Vercel OG. So this is how you can dynamically generate an OG image. And these are a core part of frames. So every time you see a frame, you see an image here and here you can see farm guide and mint more and so on. So this is probably static, but you can imagine if I choose different options, now these buttons have to be rendered dynamically. So you can use OG image next OG, sorry, to go and do that. So here you can see an image response. You can see I'm using react code and some CSS and here I'm just returning hello. And this is the size of the image. This uses Satori. You don't need to use Vercel to create these images. So here you can see the exact same idea, generating an SVG, just using react code. So that's really all there is to frames. 
you have three parts to it. You have the OG tags in the HTML page. You have the post request to handle when a button is clicked and you have the image which is generated dynamically. And you could even have a frame just based on the OG tags. You don't have to take those extra steps, but a lot of other frames will use all three of those steps. Another tool which is really helpful if you want to create these frames yourself is the frame validator. So you can paste in a frame over here and you can see what it looks like. For example, I just pasted in another URL and you can see what the frame looks like in the debugger here. Another way that I was using to debug is frames.js. And when you download their starter kit, you can run that debugger, but you can run it locally. It looks something like this. It actually looks a bit prettier now. They've in iterated on a bit since it's been launched. And you can even write your frames as if they were React. Now, I'm actually not the biggest fan of this. This might look a bit better, but I think already using the OG tags, it's already so simple that this just adds complexity to it. Some of the other parts of it might be helpful to you. For example, get frame message can get extra data that might be helpful. So Farcaster will send you the FID of the user, but if you want to get the user address attached to the FID, so you need to make calls to the Farcaster protocol. And if you do get frame message, so in the background, it will call Nainar, which is uh, API, which will give you the result. Having mentioned Nainar, Nainar is another good tool to check out. Here you can see it's the easiest way to build on top of Farcaster. It's not part of the Farcaster team. It's an external product. Here you can see they have a frame studio that makes it even easier to build stuff around it. I haven't played with their frame studio, but one thing I did use was getting the address from an FID. That behind the scenes was using Nainar. That's the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, subscribe. Every week I try and do a video about open source. Today wasn't exactly open source. I did show you a little bit of code, but there was an open database behind the scenes. So I think that somewhat counts. Anyway, enjoy and let me know what you think. Do you, do you think this idea is interesting? Do you think frames will pick up in other platforms as well? Or do you think it's something that we'll only, we'll only see in Farcaster?